Last year, Graveyard Cars was entrusted with one of the most iconic Mopar muscle cars to ever be assembled, the 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. This real XX29 car is one of only 503 ever built. Not only did we inherit one of the coolest muscle cars of all time, but it also turned out that we inherited its owner, Tom Partridge. Back when the car first showed up, Tom had stopped by to share the story about the Daytona Charger and what it meant to him from all the way back when he was a kid. I always loved the wing cars. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know what they were. I just thought they were a big, cool car with a big wing. And I loved them so much that I was in this group with my dad called the Indian Guides. And we built Pinewood Derby cars, and I had him actually make me a Pinewood Derby car with a big wing on the back. And then a few years ago, I was thumbing through the internet and typed in Project Daytona, and this Daytona came up. No motor, no interior, you know, but it's got the wing, it's got the rear window and the rear window trim, because I know those are, in, you know, extremely difficult, if not impossible to find. This was something I didn't want to lose. Over the years, Tom has not only become a fan and a customer of Graveyard Cars, but he's also become a friend. And at times, he's even been part of the crew. However, it's not always roses when Tom's around. Since we moved the Daytona into the final stages and now he can see its completion in the future, he's become more and more persistent, more impatient. He's more Tom. The clock is ticking. We're running out of time. There's lots to do. If the car doesn't get done, then Tom will never leave. It has to be done. My name is Mark Warman. I work with my worst enemy, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! And my son-in-law, Josh. Whoa! Along with my best friend, Royal. Well, all right. And our newest team member, Holly. This is exciting. We bring dead cars back to life if we don't kill each other. Oh, Mark. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Oh. Woo! Keep foot careful. Burial. Ba bam Don't hurt yourself. Oops, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Some, uh, somebody's in trouble. That was Mark. That was Mark. I watched him do that. Too. Really? Super Commando. Hey, Roll, here's put this on your engine. 70. Okay, uh, mine's a 440 Super Magnum. Commando. Real quick. It's a Plymouth. I just want to reiterate something. I Real quick, if I can get both of your attentions, all three of you. I've got a list of what's left on the Daytona. Tom is not going to be disappointed on this car. We did it once before, remember? I don't want to do it again. Darren, having called him and, and prompted him to come out, which he says he didn't, but I know he did, only inspires me to want to get that car done, get the Daytona out, get Tom out, get Darren off my back. Everything should work. We need to get that done this week. If we do get it done in a week, I'm gonna be very happy and I'm gonna reward everybody with a nice, something I believe you will enjoy doing. Okay? Like so I have many times in the past. It's a good thing. I, Even if we don't, we still get paid, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Mike Gray from Auto Metal Direct is coming out to just do kind of like a QC follow up, make sure we're happy with the parts that they've been selling us. And I'm excited to show him what they look like when they're actually on a car and not sitting in a cardboard box. So once I get that out of the way, I can get refocused on the Daytona. The big surprise is Legendary Interiors is sending out their lead installer to help us put the interior in the car, which oh, is cool. like a huge, because there's a lot of pieces, a lot of parts. Need okay. to bleed the brakes one more time because they're spongy as heck. Me and Josh are over here too. Check Just all the fluid. Well, oh, I'm gonna yeah. use him like a foreman because he's he's the most responsible one we got. Re -go, go back through and check all the fluid levels and make sure we do a final grease on it. We never do that. Grease those zerks. I don't know whether we're gonna get this car done on time or not. You know, Tom was here not too long ago and he was really pushing us to get it done. Just promise me we're gonna make every effort, no more, no grab ass, let's just get it done, let's get serious, let's get focused, and then we can go play all we want. I don't wanna let Tom down. What's a surprise? Well, that's the thing about surprises. They're a surprise, okay? I've got something planned that if we pull this off, I think everybody's gonna enjoy. Piece of cake. It's a good surprise, you're gonna like it. Oh, I don't believe the car's gonna be done within a week, so there's not gonna be any surprise. I think the only surprise there's gonna be is the car's not gonna be done. And that's not gonna be a surprise to me, Tom, Royal, Mark, Josh, Holly, or anyone. Oh. You all right, Alice? I didn't mean to hurt your shoulder. What do you got, one of them hey, rotator Royal, cups? Do you remember everything that he said? I got it written down right here. Let's rock it out. Piece of cake. Yeah. Did you? 
three foot rule. Do you remember what he said? Dude. You three didn't even hear rule. anything he said? No, because you were talking to me the whole time, you freak. I thought he was just looking right at Royal, talking to Royal, not the rest of us. True or false? The rear window louvers were standard equipment on a 1970 Plymouth Cuda. The answer coming up after the break. So were the back window louvers standard equipment on all 1970 Plymouth Cudas? The answer is false. Not only were they optional, they were very rare. The J68 code backlight louvers came on approximately only 1% of all muscle cars back in that day. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. The Daytona needs to get done sooner than later. We have legendary interiors coming out to help install the seats and the door panels, as well as Mike from AMD is going to pay us a visit. Well, I know you guys do restoration back at your shop, right? We do. You do some of your own we do, uh We do the body work. We don't actually restore cars. We do some of our own show cars, but for customers, we just do body work and, and supply them basically a foundation to work with. Mike Gray from Auto Metal Direct just showed up a little bit ago. I'm excited because we've been buying his parts since the day they hung their shingle on the door. So I'm excited about walking around the cars with them, showing them what they look like actually installed both before body and paint and after body and paint. So this should be fun. So I wanted to show you this car right here exists <laughs> without sacrificing another charger because of your sheet metal. And I get so. to see where some of it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. My name is Mike Gray. I'm with Auto Metal Direct. I do a lot of sales, outside sales, marketing, and merchandising for the company. We kind of decide what we're going to carry. And i uh, been doing this for quite a while. been with uh, Auto Metal Direct for about six years so far. And uh, the company is around just a little bit longer than that. But I've been in the industry for about 25 years or so. Yeah, this we put uh, quarters on it, and the floors inside are AMD floors. The mm -hmm. front section, the rear step wall section, the one underneath the seat, and the very back trunk and trunk floor extensions. Because it was a Midwest car. The whole bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The great thing about AMD is they saved me so much time for happening to go out there, pull a piece of metal off that we probably couldn't even salvage, and they'll send it to us. You know, it's, it's so cool that these guys are starting to reproduce these parts. They're saving us so much time. Right. So this is real close to the original thickness and millage? It is. And it's, you know, it's a lot easier to stamp thin metal, which is why people do it. It's, it's a little bit cheaper, but it's mostly because it's easier. Your dies don't have to be as precise and everything. So, but we try to make it just like original. So not only does it fit better and it doesn't have a lot of waves in it, but you know, even if you tapped on the side of it, it doesn't sound like a tin can. Yeah. No, it sounds solid. The difference in our sheet metal and what other people do is that we make our sheet metal in very close to original gauge. It's usually the same or sometimes a little bit thicker than the original was. Um, the idea there is to make it as much like original as possible and not want it to sound tinny, keep all the waves and everything out of it. It's, uh, it's stronger when it's being shipped out. It's also stronger when it's installed on the car. Darren, did you actually look at this? I know you try not to come out here because this is where people work for a living, but <laughs> did you, you actually notice? Work, work is a four-letter word. Look down the side of the quarter panel. Yeah. Before anything, though. Looks good. Before some of the other ones I looked down, I had to take oh. Dramamine first. I get sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're a joke choker. He came up with the Dramamine joke a year ago. It was mildly amusing then. No. Now he's just stomped it into the ground until there's nothing left of it. <laughs> just like us. What do you do to us? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I beat you down so I can build you up. It's the same thing a blacksmith does. Melt the steel down, break it down to its raw form, and reforge it. That's what I do with them. I beat them down. I temper them. They're stronger than they were before. Should be thanking me, not criticizing me. This has one of your skins on it. Okay. Now you sell the whole door shell. Right. Which we ended up using on the right-hand side because ours was just totally destroyed. This is your skin right here. If you look, it's got the same amount of reveal on the inner lip right. as the factory one, which I have pictures of to prove to anybody who dares question me. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the fit from the door to the quarter right there. Before any final adjustments, before anything, we have a nice gap right there. Um, Auto Metal Direct specializes in um, sheet metal and trim for old muscle cars, Chrysler's and uh, GM cars. And we do quite a few A bodies, B bodies, and E bodies in the uh, Mopar world. And then GM, we do uh, F bodies, X bodies, and A bodies. Well, I just wanted to thank you personally for, for, for sticking with a good well, company and making a good product that allows us to do from that to that. 
Well, we appreciate it. And, you know, our goal is to make somebody able to restore a car to where you couldn't tell that it was restored. Yep. Well, AMD has been really excited to work with Graveyard Cars. Uh, one of the things is that you guys start from the beginning and work all the way through the car and finish it. Well, we feel like also that a lot of the a lot of the companies out there ought to really appreciate what we do because we've started making sheet metal for cars that really weren't very easily restored before. So now oh, absolutely. other companies can reproduce the other parts of the car that are needed for restoration because how could you sell an interior if the car is rusted That's out? Nobody's right. going to put that in there. Never thought of that, right. A lot of the little right. trinkets you, they can start making now for the cars. If you've got the body out there, the big build pass, it and they yeah. will come like the yeah. movie, exactly. right? Forging the relationship we have with Auto Metal Direct is how we are able to do the awe-inspiring restoration work that we do every single day, that you see every single day. Uh, Mike from Auto Metal Direct just left. We had a great visit with him here. Now we're refocused back on the Daytona. We're getting the parts and the pieces laid out for them to be installed. Ron showed up in the meantime from uh, Legendary. He is also here getting things prepped and ready for the install. Honestly, it is a bit of a sigh of a relief because this guy's done it since he was a kid, like I've done it since I was a kid. So we should be able to burn through it just in time to meet our deadline with Tom, so. I'm Ron Halbritter. I've been doing these interiors for about 27 years. Mike called me into his office last week and said uh, Mark had a situation out here where he needed the car put together and he wanted the, uh, one of the best to do it. So we flew out and we're giving Mark a hand with us uh, slam together and uh, it's gonna look sweet. Getting everybody together on the same page of the book in a small confined area like this can be difficult, but honestly we're off to a really good rhythm, but we have almost everything ready now to go into the car. So from that standpoint, everything's absolutely awesome, um, but then the clouds of course have to open up and take a great big dookie on me. You know, I told you very clear and plain, hey, hey buddy. Bam, the clouds form overhead, the skies part, and there's Tom, just like the prodigal son. Except that they wanted the prodigal son to come home. I never wanted Tom. You know I want to get my hands dirty. You were going away for five days, remember? I changed my mind. <laughs> you know I'm a help. I got to work on it. You know we're capable of finishing it, though, right? I know you're capable of finishing it, but I wanted to have a little hand in finishing oh, it myself. Oh, my God. It's up to those idiots. Do you guys care if... Class vote. Who says I work on it? See you oh. in a couple of days. Oh, no, thanks. Thanks a lot. Here's the deal, Chrome Dome. You want to work? You can work, OK? Mm -hmm. I, I ain't taking a penny off your bill, because I know how you are. You think, you think you're going to work and flag some kind of minimum wage thing because of the state of Oregon law? Mm. Ain't no state of Oregon law here. You get paid nothing. Right. You can do it because you want to get involved. And that's it. And you know we can handle it without your. Did I ask for a discount? OK. okay. I got good news. Yes. Legendary's here. I see Ron's that. Ron's here from Legendary. Hi, so Ron. He, man like you, is actually working. So Thank you can you work with out. him on the interior. What's going on? How Thank you, you very much. You're Seats look awesome. Thanks. Tom's that guy. You know what I'm saying? He's that customer, that one from hell that drives you crazy. I love him. I'd do anything for him. If he had no money to finish paying me for the car, I'd give it to him. No problem. But he drives me bananas. Well, I did go to the coast. I saw everything I wanted to see. It was very nice. Water's cold. But it just kept bugging me working on the car. It's awesome. I'm excited as can be. It was a big team effort to get this done today. So we're going out for our first road test in 30 years. Time, hard work, and a lot of dedication. And I wouldn't change it for nothing. Things were going great until Tom decided to change the rules and come back. You were going away for five days, remember? I changed my mind. Now we have the interior work started, but we have to get it wrapped up. So the good news is, Ron's here from Legendary Interiors. We'll get the interior done today. The bad news is, Tom couldn't stay away for a whole week, so he's here to work on his car. That's fine. Work on your car. Just stay out of my hair. Stay out of my way. We're going to get along great. I guess I'd prefer to think of it as persistent. You know, kind of like that fly that won't go away that you keep swatting at. What can I say about the legendary interior? It's, it's as close as any human being on this planet could make to the exact same way they were made back in the day.
Did you work in these headrests yourself, or did some beginner do them? Were they, did they look kosher? Yeah. No, they well, were done here. Are these old originals? Yeah. yeah they're they're originals, see? I knew the originals. I'm just testing you. You are? How did, I, did I get at least a B? Mm, C plus. C plus. You know what? At least I passed. Well, I guess coming here is sort of like a Vegas show. What was the name? I think it was called Cirque du Soleil. Lame. Before you can put the rear package tray in a car, it's just like the rear seat divider. You have to apply the jute padding. So you use a spray-on glue, you put it on both surfaces, put the padding on the actual panel itself, and then you can slide it into place. Once the mirror adjustment cable is actually coming through the upper trim panel, you can put the mirror escutcheon nut in place and torque it down. Before you put the door handles on, you have to put the armrests on. This is putting the base down first, and then the two screws that hold the actual armrest itself. Yeah, I'm super excited to get in that car, turn the key, hear that engine fire up, and just smoke the tires off of that thing. I, you know, as I said before, I'm like a kid at Christmas. I just can't wait to get in that thing and tear up the town. Once the dash is installed on these cars and all the plumbing is done, uh, one of the funner parts is installing the steering column. That basically requires one guy inside the car, one guy under the hood. You feed the steering column down through the opening in the firewall, one guy out at the steering gear lining up the splines, the other guy inside pushing down. Once those two are married together, put that final finish steering wheel center cap on and you now have a steering column in your 1969 Charger Daytona. There's a lot of stainless steel on these old cars. We make sure that we polish and straighten every single piece individually before they actually get put onto the car. And then when they go on the car, they shine like jewelry, they look new. That's our goal. Make these cars look exactly like it's 1969 again. Well, we took the seats down to bare metal, had them media blasted and primered and painted. And then we had new burlap and new padding put on before the seat covers went on. That's why we had to do all that work back in our Newark, New York facility before we shipped them out. The interior, once trim panels and rear package trays and headliners are all installed, it's time for the seats. The back seat back goes in first. That sets up over the top of a couple of hooks. The back seat bottom is the next piece that goes in. You have to take the seat belts strap them up over the top of the back seat so they're out and where you can see them and lock those into their original harnesses. It's really nice to see this red car come together with a white interior. It just really pops, it's beautiful. We have the interior put together on our Daytona. It's absolutely gorgeous. That white against the red just pops. It's absolutely stunning. This is probably one of the prettier interiors we've ever done in all the years that we've been working on these cars. Uh, we're not quite out of the woods yet because there is a handful of little things that we have to do before we can fire the car, before we can go on our test drive, before we can raise our hands in the air and say, oh, look at us, we did it. The car looks absolutely stunning. I was pretty pleased how the, the final product turned out. Uh, you know, the interior of the car looks all right. I don't see why Ron, the hotshot, came out from Legendary Interiors to help us. We could have done it without him. You know, all the guys were great. Uh, Derek, Darren, Royal, Mark, Ron. Um, it was a big team effort to get this done today. I think the interior turned out pretty good only because of me. So all we got left is get the thing plumbed out, get it fired up, get the brakes bled the rest of the way so it's safe for the highway. We can go out on a road test. Good day today. And it's time to go burn some rubber. You got it, right? You're done? Yep, all set. Looks awesome. Well, no extra help from you guys. Nice. Thanks That's for Kate no, breaking for the last 15 Where you minutes. Been? You were they've, been, they've been back there watching He's him the finish supervisor. the interior of the car. He's a supervisor. Why a supervisor? Oh, it looks awesome. It does. It's amazing. Tom, it's better than you deserve. You guys are the best. I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's way better than you deserve. This is a... <laughs> I've been waiting 40 years Thanks Honestly, for I don't think we'd have got it. <laughs> It's no, beautiful. Not, not Could have time. never done it. Let's rock it. <laughs>
Let's get all a right. night's sleep and rock Thanks. out of here. Night, doll. <laughs> Dinner's on Mark. Dinner's on Darren. The standard sport hood J54 option on all 1970 to 74 Cudas had earned a street nickname. What was it? The Raisin Bran Hood. The Count Chocula Hood. The Grape Nuts Hood. Stay tuned after the break for the answer. So what street name did the sport hood on the 70 to 74 Cuda earn back in the day? Based on Kellogg's claim that every box of Raisin Bran had two scoops in it, and the 70 to 74 sport hood had two scoops in it, the street name was the Raisin Bran Hood. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. The interior looks amazing and I couldn't be happier. We're down to just the last few tune-up steps before this car gets to take its first flight in nearly 30 years. We made a lot of ground up yesterday on the Daytona, getting almost to the finish line. Came in nice and early this morning. Uh, I was hoping I didn't have to go back up in the air, but there's some things on the bottom of it we do need to fix. We think we got a proportioning valve that's stuck maybe on the brakes. So with them just buttoning up the last little things underneath it, uh, the two little things we got to do on the top, which is a spring and a bracket, that car right there is going to be on the road today, driving for the first time in probably 30 years. Today. We have to just double check and bleed the brakes because there was just a little issue with that. We got to get it uh, just tuned up a little bit in the timing correct on it. I think that's pretty much it and keep our fingers crossed. We'll be cutting it close. We'll be cutting it close, but again, I'm just in go mode because this is something I've been waiting for all my life and these guys have done an awesome, awesome job. I'm going to keep working if they're going to keep working. Okay, what I'm about to do now is adjust the end play on the axles. The end play is adjusted with this nut here that's adjustable. You want a little bit of play between the axles because when metal heats up, it expands. So you want a little bit of room in between them to allow for expansion. What they have done is allowed a adjustment for the end play between the axles to allow for the expansion and contraction of the metal. You should be using a dial indicator at home. After you do so many of them, you kind of get a feel for it. So what I'm going to do is just and a field where I believe it's right. Ta da! I am not opposed to giving credit where credit is due, and every guy on this team today deserves credit. I think we're within a couple hours of getting this car actually done, on the road, and across the finish line. What more could a boss ask for? We just finished the Daytona. We still got a rear window molding we're working on, but Tom's getting ready to go home tomorrow. So we're going out for our first road test in 30 years. Awesome, awesome. Dreamed about this since he's an inner kid. First, I haven't even sat in the car yet. Who's the dream maker though? Tell him that. Tell, You're yeah. the dream maker. Who made your dreams come true? You did. All right. I'm gonna drive first. You got it.
This is an exciting day for me, no doubt, but the only guy here it's more exciting for is Tom. I got the car warmed up and running. I got it up to operating temperature, and it's time to cut Tom loose and let him go have some fun. I'm not a huge fan of doing the big burnouts. I mean, I got all that out of my system as a kid, and I'm a little bit cautious when it comes to a new motor, but it's Tom's car. Tom wanted to do it, and what better way to break one in than to throw a couple hundred feet of cloud in the air? Absolutely proud of the way the car turned out. Couldn't be more proud. Uh, this is a moment for me, again, I don't get a lot of them. We're, we're not putting out 100 cars a day here. So when one's done like this, I stand back and I relish in the idea that while we fought, while we had a hard time getting it to where it needs to be, it is there. So does all the rest of it really matter? We've got a 1969 Charger Daytona on the road for the first time in 30 plus years, looking exactly the way it did, or possibly a little bit better, than it did on the assembly line in 1969. That's a win across the board. Okay, stop there. I'm gonna get out and guide you. The Daytona is done. It's an amazing car. The ride was freaking awesome. I never forget the fact that I'm blessed to be able to work on the cars that I grew up loving. And to me, it's nothing more rewarding than to put a customer back with this car, marry the two dreams together, send them on their way. Did you love it? Absolutely. Can't wait to get it home. It's a beautiful car. I probably said it before, but I couldn't think, other than my dad, someone that more deserved to take that first ride with me than Mark. It's a work of art on wheels. This all started out, you know, when I was a little kid. I had this dream. I saw a Superbird, big wing. My dad filled my childhood dream of having that Pinewood Derby car with the wing and the nose cone on it. Yeah. And now I'm a grown man some would say, and Anatomy. I have to thank you for fulfilling this dream of making this happen. So with sincerely all jokes aside, okay. thank You're you welcome, very, man. very much. It's been fun. It was hard to believe that, okay, this is my car. I look at the finished product and say, we just brought a dead car that some people may have written off already or would have written off in the future. We brought it back to life. So that car is now on the road putting smiles on people's faces and reminding a lot of people who grew up during that era of some great memories. I can't wait to tear up the streets in that car, as I mentioned before, so I would like to apologize in advance to all the law enforcement officials that I know. I gotta go. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Nothing makes me happier to send somebody away than Tom. <laughs> oh, you mean, <laughs> should we get the moonwalk? Wow. I could do that, but I have a bad foot. Oh, okay. See I mean, ya. See ya. All right. Tommy's gone and there's gonna be a party. Hey no, hey no. Tommy's gone. Hey everybody, Tom's gone. <laughs> Having all the cars there was so amazing. I think that people really enjoyed seeing the craftsmanship. We're today, we're tomorrow, we're the day after that. We're graveyard cars. The Daytona is finished and I am so happy Tom gets his car back and his dream is fulfilled. This is our time to celebrate and reminisce with our family, with our friends, to look back at the successes and how far we've come in just the last three years. Go Ducks, huh? Guess they could get the Dorito Bowl. Aaron, did you hear that? You? Mark just you said, you? said Go Ducks. Mark said, who are you? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I've seen you there. I know. Can you buy it? Oh. Woo! Yeah. Or so oh, more. Woo! I buy it. The right of passage. No, Mark said so. I had envisioned from the beginning of this project having a wrap up, a, a moment where we could come full circle. And that's what today is. It's a chance for the technicians that have worked on the cars, their friends, their family, to get together. We're at the studio. We're going to sit down, watch through where we started, and we know where we're at now, and to actually appreciate the things that we've had to go through rather than just always complain about them. 
So this is a day of reflection. This is a day of all of us being able to look each other in the eye and know that we really have come a long way as a team, uh, as a program, as a, I think, a crucial part of bringing Americana back, uh, an, an intricate part of reliving the dreams in millions of people's lives as they watch us do what we do on a daily basis. This is what it's all about. This is where it comes together. Thanks everybody for coming. We appreciate you showing up, showing your support. So what we put in the queue is Graveyard Cars, episode one, season one. <laughs> We've evolved a little bit now and you can watch that progression throughout uh, season two and season three. I don't know what you're laughing at. <laughs> yep. So anyway, enjoy. Bear in mind, we grew a lot from this first episode. Enjoy. Whoa. Oh, All right. <laughs> well, I sit right here. But there's only one spot left, Darren. You decide. I don't normally let my hair down and have a lot of fun. This is awesome. It's really cool to have all the guys out, to have their friends and their family out, and to be able to sit down like in the theater as a group and, and watch our first episode. I think everybody loved it. Um, even though I know that we've evolved a lot and I know that there were some wincing moments for me when I look back at it, it still, to me, was a, uh, a milestone. I mean, you gotta start somewhere, right? And I think that most of the people that were in there watching it, uh, as they were laughing through it, they, they laugh more now knowing that those characters that started out a bit unbelievable are really who we are. So, so they don't have, they can go out front and find that me and Darren fight like cats and dogs and me and Royal insult each other all the time. And so the fact that we really showed the world that we're doing that, but at the same time we're bringing cars back to life, uh, it, it was great. I, I think that everybody enjoyed it. I think everybody's having a great time and I look forward to the next three seasons of Graveyard Cars. But it's so crazy to watch us now, ma'am. I know. Man. From the very beginning, you know, whenever we filmed season one, we didn't have a budget. You know, we were scraping at the bit to make ends meet and, you know, to, to take a look back and to see where we are now, just to compare the two, it's time, hard work, and a lot of dedication. And I wouldn't change it for nothing. Where I found that thing? Yeah. For, okay. On the floor. No, it doesn't Was it? Mm -hmm. Like you put it there? No, yeah, he dropped it. I never lost. Whoever he is. You did lose it. He, no. Yeah, you most certainly did. Who found it, Mark? You get that in later, can't you? I went out and cut it out of another car with a torch. No, no, Mark. I ended up finding the original. How about you? Where did you find it at? On the floor, because it fell out of your pocket when you were reaching for candy or something. <laughs> Well, that's where it all started. Now let's go eat some hot dogs. I had forgotten really how bad episode one of season one really was till I had to watch it. So today is great. We've got the cars from season one with the 1970 Plymouth Rotor and our FC 733 automatic. We got the Phantasm 344 speed quadruple black car that Don Coscarelli and Michael Baldwin signed from season two. And we've got our beautiful, one of the cars from season three, our Daytona Charger. Now's a great time for me to be able to stand back as well as the rest of the guys and enjoy the fruits of our labor. There's a secondary, but yeah, got it. It's all air cleaner, huh? Yeah, it's all air cleaner. You can't see anything. <laughs> I want to hear this mother run. Business man. But yeah, if it's a Roadrunner horn, it was purple. Except in 68, it was black because Warner Brothers hadn't authorized Chrysler to use the colors yet. Hey, do you want to go cruising? Yeah. <laughs> Where are the keys? <laughs> Having all the cars there was so amazing. I think that people really enjoyed seeing the craftsmanship. I think that people really, really enjoyed it. Uh, this was a great opportunity to go out and take the cars for a 
all for one, one for all, three musketeers kind of drive for the cars. <laughs> we ran to the cars. Anybody that got to their car first or the ones that they wanted got to drive that car. I drove the Daytona Charger. Take your time. Oh, freaking bird. Holly and I paired up and we hopped in the Roadrunner. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Go, D, go. Yeah, get past that before you do something like that. I really feel like season three really exemplifies the craftsmanship and talent that these guys have, and I feel really grateful and happy to be part of it. It was a blast driving through town with those three cars. It really brought back a lot of memories of all those cars on the road back then. See, it was an original white stripe car. Now you can see from the original stripes how high, this is factory stuff. Look how low they were. I wouldn't put them there. Eight guys in the world could have done oh, that. Mark, there's a lot of people, but go ahead. No, there's not. Set the idol up. Put the whole car together, the body, the paint, the interior. Detail the suspension, the OE. Oh, shut it off. Hi. Did he get you? Darren got burnt. You want to go see if he's OK? He got my back. That feeling that I got being able to drive alongside with those guys was something that I could really get used to. It brought back a lot of memories when I was, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, driving these cars around. Just a lot of fun. Question is, okay, who did it and who covered it up? Not insane. I'm gonna say it takes your breath it's away. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Wow thinking what I'm thinking. Let's go. What I'll do is I'll end up just uh, going inside and seeing if I can send him a quick email. Or... I don't think season four will be as good as season three. I think it will be better. You guys thought I was gonna say it's gonna be worse, didn't you? <laughs> it was such an awesome feeling to be driving down the road and have everybody looking at you and waving, honking, all that cool stuff. While the accolades are nice, while the pats on the back are great, this is far from the end. This is just the beginning of the revolution. Where are we at? We're today. We're tomorrow. We're the day after that. We're Graveyard Cars. We had an awesome week at Graveyard Cars. We got our Daytona done. More happy than the Daytona being done is Tom's bald ass flying back home again. Never have to see him again. 
awesome. That's Thank a god. Well, that to me is the highlight. I'm kind of, gonna, I'm gonna kind of miss them. We were actually very productive this year. We had an awesome year. Yeah. Very productive. Well, think about it. when you say we're very productive. Do you have any conscious recollection of what we did? No, because it all has flown by so fast. I'll help you out. Chris Driscoll got his AAR CUDA back. He's putting his own motor and transmission in it, but that was a huge hit. That thing looked beautiful when it left. Probably one of the prettiest AAR CUDAs in the world. And compliments of hmm, us. Oh, That's right. what I meant to say. You were going to say us, yeah. We got the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT Factory 440 Automatic FC7. Completely restored, back from the grave for the first time in 35 years, on the road, traveling down the freeway, Corvette Stingray, he does it his way. Didn't you do this? It's a song. <laughs> no, it was, when, it was when David Lee Roth went out. Why are you laughing about, you idiot? I mean, overall, I think I was a lot more peaceful and calm guy this year. I mean, I think we're, I think as a team, as a family, we're growing together in the right way. Might I remind you of the time that you told Darren you'd rip his head off and piss in his neck? Well, my exact, <laughs> what is the nervous laugh about? The exact word was, I'm going to rip the eyes out of your head and piss in your dead skull. That was the, and what you don't understand is all those little things are movie references. That's Jack Nicholson and a few good men. Okay, that's where that stuff comes from. That's where all your stuff One comes guy, from. No, not all of my stuff. Most of my stuff's original. I just no. take things that if I've you heard watch, in the past. If you watch some old movies, you'll find it. You yeah. watch old movies at night to get material to use on us. I never nobody's said heard that. it. Yes, you did, because nobody's heard it for a long Who time. Who flushed the toilet? Why are you talking? I'm throwing in years and years of movie well, trivia. you how much I listen. <laughs> oh, oh, service. How about, you got served. How, did, did you recognize You are. <laughs> what the hell? The whole bottom half of your eye swole down and the top of the ground up like this and your eyeball was floating in there like a dead fish? My most memorable moment with Darren is when I... Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, I heard him again. Waved at you with just one finger. Two yeah, fingers. That, Two fingers. I saw it. that pumpkin that you dropped. Smashed. You're a disrespectful puke. You know that? That reminds me how much work did we get done on my Challenger? It much doesn't you, matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter because it. Wow. Bill Goldberg was saying. here. So the rest of the story is that uh, we got to meet with Bill Goldberg. That was awesome. Uh, had a good visit with him. The black Phantasm 344 speed Cuda completely finished. Mr. Don Coscarelli, Mr. A. Michael Baldwin came out, signed the Cuda, went for a drive in it, had a great visit. What else we get done? See, this is, this is an example for people to see. Can I go back to work now? You never started. You <laughs> shut up, cue ball. Don't start on and me. And when you part, start putting Wait, steel wool dude, on the side of your head. Your forehead looks like a freaking, like the, the neck of a Bender Stratocaster. I got things to do. Your eyes are dude, swollen. Hey, dude, how, how have you been friends with this guy your whole Novocaine! Life? Oh! <laughs>